Greetings everybody, I'm Yarlik, and I wanted to make another of these videos since the previous one was pretty well received. So this time we're going to be doing a boss fight, in particular we're going to be doing Elder Who. And as before we're going to first make our way into the room, and we're just waiting for the first frame of control. I've already set up a save state. Okay, so first frame of control was two frames back. Oops. I always clicked the wrong things. All right, there we go. So that should be the dash frame there. Okay, and then we got 61 frames for a dash, and we're gonna string a bunch of these together because it's a long walk to the uh, location for Elder Who. It's gonna be frame 32. And then we can take all of this, copy and paste. And then do that several times. And then let it dash into the room. We could do wall cling storage there, but I don't think I'm going to bother. It's not for a ton of space in the room anyways. So let's set a save state here because we're getting closer to the altar or grave, or I don't know what it is exactly. Okay, a little bit closer. And then, let's see, one more dash, probably. I might be able to hit a dream nail without a dash, but let's just let it dash in a little bit more. Um, okay. And then we're going to let a dream nail as soon as we get control. So let's set a safe state. And then we will step forward until I see control flags again. Okay, we got control. So starting in the prior frame, we can begin dream nailing. And we don't have a uh, dream wielder, so we're just gonna dream, dream nail for a full second and that'll lock it in. So we wanna go up to five on the next hundred here. There we go. Let's start the dream nail. And then we do this. And then I'm just going to save state because I never remember exactly when we get control. I should really write that down at some point. That'll probably save time. Okay. Uh, so we should get control soon. We don't have enough soul for a race right away. And so it couldn't find any good places to gather some. But we should be able to jump up and get a couple hits in, and then hopefully uh, get a wraith in before he teleports. So step forward until we get control. Looks like it takes a little bit. Okay, there we go. So we can start jumping on this frame. And so let's start jumping. Set a safe state. So probably what we want to do is jump and do an upswing dash upswing. So let's try that. Now let's try attacking like around this frame and see if we reach him. Okay, we do. However, it does knock him up, which means we won't be able to do a dash into another upswing. So actually, let's do this as a side swing dash upswing. So we'll probably have to start the side swing later. We get side swing, and it's not quite. All right, a little bit later. There we go. Okay, and then we want to dash on as soon as we can. 
There we go. And we do actually have enough soul for raids. Let's try to do a nail cancel into a raids. Okay, we're going a little too far over. So let's, um, over here, let's move backwards first. And then, oh, that doesn't quite jump high enough if I'm further back. So let's not go quite that far back. Uh, let's try that. There we go. Okay, so now we're not quite as far over. Okay, so we should be able to nail swing on this frame. We want to work our way back left. Nope, we couldn't quite swing on that frame. Probably this frame. Okay, a little bit too far over. So let's uh, come back here. Let's go further left and then We'll dash a little bit later. Okay. Not quite that far. Okay, let's dash a little bit later still. So that we're a little higher up. And... Let's try this. And let's swing a little bit later as well. Okay, there we go. So now we'll dash over. And we did dash a little bit later, so we probably need to swing a little bit later. I recall right, it actually should be around there. No, oh, no, we could attack on this frame. Let's do that. So, slash, dash over, and then up slash. Okay, the up slash doesn't work because he's moving away from us too quickly. So we could do a left slash, or actually the other option here is we could go directly from a nail hit into a wraiths. So let's try that instead, actually. Let's see how far the, the rates go up. So if we do something like this, okay. Um, let's see. Let's see where we get cast control. Looks like we already have it there. Around here, probably. Yep. Nope, nope. Not there. Um, okay. Let's see, cast. Okay, we are casting. Uh, he might go out of range. So we've got 31 damage. Uh, okay, so it pushes him too far up. So in order to do this, we're going to need to do our upswing much later in the jump so that he hits the ceiling first. So let's shift this whole thing down. So we'll do this and then move this to like here. Okay. Okay, too soon. Okay, hit and then rates. Okay. So is it two forty one? First tick thirty one. And then second tick twenty one. And then does he fall back in in time to hit it? Okay, now we only got two ticks. Uh, so let's 
Do a little bit higher. A little bit later, potentially. Okay, 31. Oh, he teleported that time. So we don't want him to teleport. Um, so let's still do it here, but then we'll still do the rates a little bit later and see what happens. So we've got 31. And then 21, hopefully. 21. And then... Do we get the 11? We do get the 11, but he teleported. Uh, but that's okay, because we got all three ticks. And we'll be able to dash after this here. Uh, so let's set another save state. Because I'm fairly happy with that damage output. And then... Uh, we're going to start going left as soon as the raid sends. And then... Uh, there's no real reason to dash sooner. Because we'll just be falling in the air anyways. And then once we're close to the ground, then we'll do a dash. So we'll dash over to him. So you may have noticed part of what we were doing there is we were manipulating RNG. And what that meant was we were trying attacks at different times. And thereby changing the random numbers that the boss would roll. Which then changed on which hit the boss would teleport. And we wanted to delay that long enough that we got the three ticks in for the wraiths. So we're going to step over here. Okay, so we've got some attack coming in. We should be able to sit between these two here. Uh, a little hard to tell right now, but let's... Uh, let's try about here and then start jumping. And see if that clears the... Let's keep jumping. We won't be able to nail slash yet, I think, because we need to dodge these. Uh, looks like we have... No, we're not quite clear. We want to go a little bit further left. Oh, no. That's a little bit too far left. So we might need to go left and then right to uh, kind of wiggle and position ourselves with a better subpixel there. I guess it's not quite a subpixel. No, but it's still not quite happy. Let's wiggle a little more. We'll get ourselves a nice little clearance through the middle of those rings. I mean, we could just go further over and then jump further over. That might be better, actually, because it looks like we have a fair amount of clearance here. We'll be able to get over before the rings get us, I think. So let's start jumping, like, right around here. Um, actually, we're not hitting the ground yet, so we have to wait a little. Now we should be able to jump. So we come over here. And then we probably want to do a similar uh, side slash here. And then probably... Okay, we got knocked back a little bit too far there. So we want to avoid that knockback, so we're probably just going to do an upslash instead. Because we don't want to get knocked back into the attack. Definitely boss fights get a little bit more tricky, because you have to deal with more dynamics and find ways to uh, manipulate things without getting hit. Okay, so we put the upslash there. And then if we do a dash here... We'll hit that wall, and we might be able to wall jump and then do another nail slash. So let's try that. And then uh, let's set the save state a little bit closer as well. Now that we have something we like here. Okay, so up slash and then dash over. And then the dash. We should be able to uh, wall jump here. So we should go to start wall jumping. And then, uh, let's see, our next attack 
We were on frame 3, and it's a 42 frame cooldown, so we should be able to attack on frame 45. So we can attack in this frame. So this will give us a knockback, which will push us against the diagonal wall, most likely. Um, if we can get above him, we could potentially dash over and do a pogo. Uh, which can be dangerous with this guy, because he can summon things right on top of you. But let's try it. Our next dash should be at 76. Uh, so I'm going to keep jumping. Okay. Let me dash over. We might be able to get a dive in, actually, which would be interesting. Only so many chances you get to dive Elder Who. Okay. Alright, so we can attack on this frame. So let's do a pogo. And then let's see if we can get a dive off of the pogo. We might need to dash again first because he's moving to the right. Yeah, and if we if we were to dive here, it's not gonna work. So we need to we he either needs to not be moving right so much, or we need to dash over and then set up a dive from a dash. Because right now he's still moving to the right at a velocity of eight. So that's no good. So we'll just keep moving over. So here's the dash. We could dash on this frame. And then the thought would be is at the very end of the dash, we should be able to immediately start diving. And the dive, he should be catching up around the time we start the dive. Okay, interesting. So he launches an attack first. But that should be okay. Uh, we can always move left a little bit. I think. Let's see if we can get back in time. It's a little awkward. Although actually, we have iframes going through the attack. So we might be able to do it like right here. Yeah, let's dive right through the middle of his attack and see how that goes. Oh, uh, nope, because his attack hits us before the iframes start. So let's go a little bit further over. Okay, so we have clearance. So he's gonna dive us, we're gonna dive him. So first hit, okay, we can do 15 damage from that. And then hopefully that knocks him down far enough that the shock wave also hits him. It does not. Okay. So I think what we need to do is we need to poke him again to knock him down. And then by knocking him down, we'll then be able to get a good dive on him. So we come in here. Oops. Oh, you can pogo his attack. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Not ideal, but it's interesting. So actually, if we're going to be doing a pogo anyways, rather than dashing over, maybe what we should do is just continue going to the right. And don't do a dash. And just do a pogo directly. Yep, that looks like it should work. So if we go to like here. And then we can pogo at frame 47. Which actually is right here, but that's too early. So we're just going to have to wait a little bit. And then do that like around here. Oops. Uh, as before, we need to do it a little later because of the fact that we're pro-going is attack.
Okay, we hit him. And then I think we need to keep going right a little bit here. Because he's also still going a little bit right. And then we want to cast as soon as we can. Okay, so we have clearance. Um, and then we have cast on this frame. So let's cast here. We just kind of hug the, the edge of his attack here. And then we're going to start diving. I kind of like this. We're basically going in parallel with this attack. Okay, so we hit him. Good. That gets 160. And then we have iframes, so we're not hit by his attack. And then we get another hit from the shockwave. There we go. So I'm very happy with that. So let's save that save save. And then probably after the dive, we're going to start dashing to the right, but let's just wait until the dive gets us control back. Being downside the dive, it does do 35 damage, which is a little more than the rates on this patch, but it does cause you to lose control for a very long period of time from the dive recovery. So it's definitely a trade-off. Okay, yeah, he's floating off into the distance there. So we're going to have to dash over to catch up to him. Set a save state. And then we'll step over here. Um, so maybe we'll be able to jump up and hit him with a nail. Kind of see what he does here. We might just want to dash again rather than trying to jump now because he's so high up there. Although he might come back down again. Uh, let's let's do a dash. Uh, so next dash is going to be on frame 55, which actually is pretty late. Let's see where things look like when we get to that frame. Yeah, he's still going right, so we, we definitely want to dash. Yeah, so this could be good. We should be able to set him up in a position where we're kind of knocking him against the wall. And then hopefully getting a couple nail hits in, and then maybe a race. Let's see, we're going to want to start jumping as soon as possible, I think. Uh, we're probably going to have to do like a nail slash into a dash to make this work, because otherwise this attack will hit us most likely. So we dash in, we start jumping. Let's set a safe state here. Okay. And then we should be able to attack him on probably starting around this frame. Actually, we can go a little earlier than that. Probably even earlier still. Okay, so uh, let's dash from here so that uh, we avoid his attack. Well, we might be able to sneak our way through this attack, actually. So let's see. Um, let's just keep jumping. And then our next nail slash we want to do on frame 32. So let's just set that up so that we have that ready. Okay, looks like we might need to go a little bit right. Oh, nope, we didn't need to go right anything, we might need to go a little bit left. So let's remove some of the rightward movement over here. So we're going to be further left. And actually, that's still... Still too far. It might be because the nail knockback is overriding the... There we go. Nope, a little too far. We just need to be a little bit further over. Okay, yeah, we're getting a similar issue here where the subpixel position is not happy with this. Uh, but what we might be able to do is go like this and then do a turnaround. 
That's not happy. Uh, we might be able to do like a turnaround here. Okay, yeah, so this time we're able to clear it. And then we want to turn again and then get a nail swing in here. Okay, so we can't turn quite that early. So let's delay it by a couple frames so that the attack has passed us by the time we get there. Yep, so now we can turn. And we should nail slash. Okay, we need to keep moving right a little bit here. So that we actually reach him. Okay, this is looking promising. Let's hold right during this whole period, because we want to be closer to him. Because hopefully we can get in, maybe even a race before he teleports. Uh, we do have enough soul now, I think. So, let's do this. Uh, we don't want to dash, because we're just going to crash directly into him. So, we'll do like this. So, let's see here. We could dash now, but I think we'd be better off getting another nail hit in first. So, we can go at 76 as our next nail. And I'm going to guess we're going to want an up slash here. And then maybe we can even start jumping before we do it. Yeah, let's try jumping here. Okay. Uh, but the the issue with the up slash is that that's, if we want to do a wraith here, we're going to be knocking him out of our range probably. So let's see if we can do it with a side slash. Okay, we don't quite get there. Um, although we also weren't jumping the whole time, so let's try that again. Okay, um, let's see, let's slash a little bit later. Okay, so that was good except he teleported, and we don't really like that. So, let's see what we can do differently. We don't really have a chance to jump here, so in order to change this, we kind of have to change how we are uh, attacking. So we've got some sparks there, so let's try going to the left instead. Okay, he's still teleported, uh, because we still get a knockback turnaround. Because there's a weird glitch where when you turn around, the knockback will actually go on the wall you turn to instead of the wall that you swung the nail toward. Um, although we can mitigate that by not going as far right, potentially. And that won't get the spark, potentially, although we need to go a little bit right in order to even hit him. So let's try that. Okay, there we go. Now he didn't teleport this time, which is important. So after we do this, we want to do a race pretty much immediately. So let's try it like right there. Okay, uh, he's probably going to get knocked out of our range, though. Yeah, that's no good. Okay, so since we're knocking him to the left, let's actually do a dash instead. So uh, we want to hit him. Uh, no, he's got to be going that way. We can't go left right away, because then we don't hit him in time. Okay, still too soon. Still too soon. Interesting. I know we had the hit here earlier. It changed something. Interesting. What did it change? I think I moved the nail lock back by mistake.
Okay, but now he's teleporting. But that's because I moved further right. So let's do that. I know we had this just a moment ago. Interesting. I think it was on this frame. Something is different, though. What did we change here? I think we're jumping at about the right time. Let's check that. Okay, yeah, we're starting to jump a little bit early, which is fine, we buffer it. So one thing I could do is I could actually jump a ways up like we did previously, because uh, we were going to have to do a dash anyways. What if we just delay our upswing so that uh, he should be further up. No, he wants to teleport in that case, too. Yeah, the most annoying thing with Elder 2 is keeping him from teleporting. And that can be very tricky. Let's try jumping on a slightly different frame. Okay, that's no good. Um, let's try this actually okay we want to jump up here a little bit later and jump earlier Okay, there we go. So, right. I think I was uh, slashing the wrong direction. That's what was happening wrong before. Uh, so we do have a dash, I think, right around here. Okay, a little bit later. Might as well jump so we are as high as possible here. Okay, so we dash over, and then we'll be able to race from over here as soon as we finish the dash. Okay, so we should put a race right here. Let's try that. Okay, so we get one hit. And then we'll see if we get a second tick. Okay, so he teleports after the second tick. So the question is whether or not we consider this good enough. Or if we want to maybe just farm a little bit more soul first. And then get a double rate sometime later when he's not going to teleport. Or at the very least try to get him to teleport in a way that's not quite so inconvenient. So let's try something like this. Uh, oops, uh, we can't quite attack there. 42, so it's going to be 26. Yeah, I needed to wait one more frame. Okay, so that did work. So we got another hit on him here. So let's let him kind of work his way to the ceiling there. And then we'll jump as soon as we reach down here. Okay, good. Now, so he's, he's drifting downward. And then we're going to jump here and we're going to meet him in the middle and then try rates here. 
and see if we can get a full three ticks on him. Okay, so somewhere around, let's say, here. Good, so he's going to be busy with this attack. So he shouldn't uh, warp away. So one tick, two ticks. Okay, but he's getting too far away. So we're only getting two ticks. So let's uh, stop moving left here and then race higher up. Okay, one tick, two tick. Can we get a three tick? Third tick, there we go. Excellent. So he's only got 74 health left. Uh, that is a little bit more than two more rates, um, although we'll be able to get him down probably with some nail hits. So probably one more cast of either diver rates and then uh, some nail hits. Well, let's set a save state because I'm fairly happy with this. I definitely want to get no pancakes on this fight. I didn't manage to do that with the um, last time I did a Elder Who fight, so it'll be very gratifying to not have pancakes. Okay, so at this point, uh, he's kind of out of reach, so... Oh, actually, do we have enough soul for another Wraiths right away? We might. Let's try. No, we're, we're one tick short, so we can't Wraiths again. He's probably a little bit too high to Wraiths again anyways. Uh, so we're just going to let ourselves drop here. Uh, we want to start moving left, because he's moving left. Okay. And then we're going to jump to try to catch up with him. So, ideally, we would want to knock him to the right. Let's see if we can do that. Let's try it like right around here. So we'll try to catch up to him and then knock him right so that he's not moving so far left. Okay, we need to catch him a little sooner. Let's start moving left sooner. Actually, let's start moving left a lot sooner. Okay, there we go. So, now what we're going to want to do most likely is uh, dash. So we're actually hitting a little bit high, so let's do it here. And then we can actually stop jumping right here, because he's drifting downwards. Uh, okay, we need to jump a little bit higher than that. Okay, ooh, interesting. So he teleported that time. That's not a terrible teleport, but I liked the other one that we had better. So let's delay the teleport. We're changing our attack to be in a different frame, and because it's on a different frame, we'll have different RNG. Okay, he still teleported, but I believe on this frame he didn't teleport. This is the one we had earlier. Just not jumping quite as high. Interesting. I could have sworn he teleported, didn't teleport in that frame. Although we are, we are starting to jump on a different frame potentially too. No, no, there we go. Okay. Uh, so we're probably going to want to do a dash over. Let's see. Because he is drifting to the right, although I think he's still trying to go left. So this actually might be a good place to do a race and see if he just kind of walks left into it. And if not, then we can try dashing over. Okay, so let's see what he does. Okay, so he teleports immediately as soon as we do a race. So that's not great. Let's farm some nail hits instead. Just kind of expect him to keep going left. So we'll keep going left, and then we want our next nail hit to be at uh, 
64. And maybe we'll we'll try to get a dive in. So basically we just need to get him to do an attack, and then once he does an attack, we can go for a dive. Um, let's do an up slash here. So let's stop moving left so that he catches up with us a little. Okay. Um, let's stop moving left sooner. So we get side slash, stop, and then up slash. Okay. So let's... Let's do an up slash into a jump. That way we should hopefully hit him. Okay, so we start up slashing and then we get our jump. Okay, so at this point, we can stop the jump because the up slash is knocking us down anyways. Okay, so we teleported away at that point. He's, looks like he's probably going to do pancakes here, which I don't like. So let's change the frame that we... Let's start up slashing here. Oh, that's actually too soon, uh, because I needed to go at 64. So let's do it a little bit later instead. So he's not... Okay, he's teleporting away again. So what else can I do here? Let's change the friendly jump on, because that also changes RNG. Okay. Okay, so he's still teleporting. Just not ideal. One frame later. Obviously, this isn't a perfect fight because ideally, a perfect fight you want to be hitting nails on cooldown. But he does not want to be cooperative here. We might just have to accept the teleport because it looks like I'm noticing that he's um, looks like he's appearing on the right. So if that's the case. Let's try, instead of an up slash, let's try a side slash again. And do something like this. Okay, that's actually jumping a little too soon. Okay, here we go. So now he's in a position where he's already started an attack. So let's see if we can get like a pogo into a dive on him. We might be able to do that. Uh, so let's set a save state because now he's not teleporting, which is good. And then our next nail slash is at uh, 12. So let's try to get a pogo. And to do that, now we're going to want to move to the right. We can always tweak this if we need to. Okay, do we have enough time? Okay, we don't want to move too far right, because we need to get clear of him first. Okay, we can't jump anymore anyways, because we did a pogo. There we go, we just need to get far enough that we're clear of the attack, and then we should be able to uh, start a dive. So let's do that. Yeah, perfect. He's going to be right near the bottom. So we get a hit in. Uh, he teleported away from our dive. So we need to start the dive a little bit sooner. So hopefully we can squeeze this out here. Okay. Okay, he did it again. Very annoying. Uh, let's see. So let's try doing the pogo a little bit later. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. He didn't teleport this time. So we should get our shockwave. Okay, so he just needs two more nail hits to die. So we should be able to do that. We do have to wait for the recovery frames from the dive. Let's set the save state. And then... Okay, come on, give me control back. There we go. So, we want to do something like this. So we want to go... We want to go left. Catch up with him. And we're probably going to do that thing where we nail slash him to the right again. So let's do that. We can keep moving left while we're swinging to the right. Hmm, we need to start walking a little sooner to catch up to him. So we're going to do something like this. So we didn't quite catch him. We need to walk a little bit sooner. That are still, oh, we probably don't have control yet. That's the problem. Yeah, we don't have control yet. So we get control of this frame. So we're gonna need to go a little further, I think. Although, is he going faster than us? No, we're going slightly faster than him. So we should be able to catch up to him if we go more frames. Because he's going at negative eight, we're going at negative 8.3. And he does slow down here. There we go. Okay. So we can stop jumping, and then at this point, we want to start going right. Let's just make sure that we get there. There we go. Uh, we're probably going to want to dash over. Yep. Let's dash over, and then our next attack is going to be at 16. And then we should be able to do an up slash, and that should be not to finish him off. Oh, we didn't knock him very far over. That's unfortunate. Um, so actually... Interesting. I wonder if we can reach him... Because if we can't reach him over there, that's no good. Yeah. We're gonna want to... do something like this probably but that means we want to be higher when we dash over so we knock him to the right and actually we want to be further left when we start the dash because our problem is that we're too far right so we're gonna move further left here okay so we knock him over we start our dash and we're following him pretty closely but we, we outpace him because he stops due to the attack animation. But now what we want to do is we want to start moving left and then hit him. Okay, there we go. So we did damage and that should have uh, killed him. Because we got the big flash there and he was one hit away, so we should be good. So let's set a save state. And then we're just going to allow the knight to Fall gently. Ooh, interesting. We're getting hit right after the attack. Okay, there's a wrinkle. So, is there a way that we can mitigate that? There might be, actually. What if, after the knockback, we'll have enough soul that we could actually do a dive? And, or we can just do an inventory drop, actually. So let's keep the soul. So, we hit him there, and then let's open inventory, and then theory, okay, we're still, yeah, we're still too far over, because we're actually hitting him well before. Well, let's do something like this, maybe. We hit him a little bit later. 
Okay, we need to open inventory a little bit later because we need to keep moving over. And the inventory is basically canceling our knockback. There we go. So we don't get the nail knockback and we just start falling instead. Maybe slightly cheating? I don't know. Humans could theoretically do that. It'd be very difficult though. There we go. There we go. Elder Who has been taken care of. Um, I think I'll call it here, uh, so you don't have to sit through me setting up the actual final dream nail and everything. And then I'll encode it as usual and post it at the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this and maybe even learned a little bit about how TAS works.